Welcome to St. Andrew Presbyterian Church of Tulsa, Oklahoma. I am and we all are so pleased that you have chosen and joined with us this morning and worshiped the Lord together. This week, Tulsa has a winter storm and the older Lord and still the snowy coming. So please watch your step and please take care if you go outside for shopping or meet somebody. And don't forget to wear the mask. We still in the pandemic. So may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, especially the winner's storm too. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship our Almighty God as we receive this morning's prelude. Please join with me in call to worship this morning. It's a steep climb up the mountain. God gives us strength for the trip. The light is shining on the mountain. God opens our eyes to holy splendor. We don't know what to do on the mountains. God provides a guide and companions. We are ready to come out of the darkness. God calls us to live in the light.
Please join with me. Call to confession and silent prayer. Let the power of the Spirit shape our prayers. For the times we choose the veil of darkness over your gospel of light, forgive us, Lord. For the times we proclaim ourselves instead of proclaiming Christ, forgive us, Lord. For the times we choose mindless action over heartfelt devotion, forgive us, Lord. For the times we choose our own fear over your grace, forgive us, Lord. Assurance of God's pardon. God said, Let light shine in the darkness. That same light shines in our hearts. We are forgiven. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Also with you. Peace be 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 with you. The peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. Peace 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 be with you. Pe
be with you here in California. California. Okay. Hi there. Our reading today is from 2 Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. A company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elisha said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha, and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen! But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The reading from the New Testament today is from Mark 9, verses 2 through 9, the transfiguration of Jesus. Now, six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. And then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for, for they were terrified. And then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. Now, as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. 
Here ends our reading from the Gospel according to Mark. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Twenty-one days, twenty-eight days, but twenty-one days, twenty-eight days after what? After I got my COVID vaccine. If you get a Pfizer vaccine, you wait 21 days for your second shot. If you get a Moderna, 28 days. You go back to the same place, same time, they give you the second shot. So it's important to know when did you get that shot? And, and in our scripture today, it starts off with six days later. So it's important for us to know what is that referring to? Six days after what? Well, in chapter 8 of Mark, it, it says that Jesus began um, to ask them, uh, who do people say that I am? What, what, what's been said about who I am? And, and, and he gets various answers, and then he says, but who do you say that I am? And Peter jumps up and says, you are the Messiah. And you can just see the excitement. Can't you imagine the other disciples going up to Peter and high-fiving him because he got the right answer? Jesus is the Messiah. But look what happens next. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected and, and be killed and after three days rise again. Six days earlier, Peter said, you're the Messiah, but Jesus said the Son of Man must suffer and die and be raised again. Peter couldn't take that. It says that Peter rebuked Jesus. Peter, in some translations, corrected Jesus. And Jesus, in turn, rebuked Peter. He said, get, get behind me. You're, you're, you're not helping. You're wrong. And then after that, to make it even worse, it says that he called the crowds with his disciples and said, if anyone wants to be my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, follow me. So the events of this scripture happened six days before, and, and they help us understand what this very strange story called the Transfiguration it is all about. The story of the Transfiguration in some ways answers that question again. Who is Jesus? Peter got it right. You're the Messiah. But then he just could not comprehend that the Messiah would suffer and die and be raised from the dead. So Jesus gathered Peter, James, and John, kind of the inner core of the disciples. And it says that he took them with him up a high mountain apart by themselves, obviously wanting to emphasize that they are alone. The crowds are down in the valley. The other disciples are, are still somewhere away. And Jesus is taking these three with him. Now, I wouldn't exactly call this the first team of disciples, would you? Peter has rebuked Jesus and been rebuked. James and John before long will be fussing over who's going to be greatest in the kingdom. These disciples don't amount to too much, but Jesus took them with him up, up the mountain to the mountaintop. And, and when they were there, it, it says that Jesus was seen talking with Elijah and Moses. Elijah, the prophet, 
Moses, the giver of the law. And, and from ancient times, in Jesus' time, the law and the prophets were symbolized by Moses and Elijah. So when they read scriptures, they were reading from the law and from the prophets. So Jesus looked back and, and was connected with the history of his people, connected with God's revelation in the law and in the prophets. But at the same time, it says that, that Jesus was, was whiter than anyone could imagine. He was transfigured. I, I can't imagine exactly what that means, what happened, but, but it somehow points forward to, to the resurrection. Jesus was whiter than white and, and could be seen as, as looking forward to the resurrection. So in some ways, the transfiguration tells us that Jesus was tied into the past, but also looking forward to the future. And Peter and the others couldn't, couldn't comprehend this. And, and it says that Peter was so terrified that he just blurted out the, the first thing that came into his mind, Lord, let's make some booths here. One for you, one for Elijah, one for Moses, and, and we can just stay here on the mountain. He didn't know what he was saying. And then it says that a, a cloud came over them on the top of the mountain. Remember how the cloud symbolized the presence of God? As, as the Israelites were leaving Egypt, they were guided by a cloud and a fire. So the cloud symbolized the presence of God descending upon them. And, and a voice came out of heaven and, and said, this is my son. This is the beloved. Listen to him. So who is this Jesus? Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ. Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament law and the prophets. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the beloved of God. Listen to him. So this in some ways, strange story tells us who Jesus is. But it also says something to us about how we as disciples respond to this Jesus. First of all, we like Peter and James and John really don't know what to say, do we? Peter blurts out the first thing that comes into his head, and Mark says he was afraid. He, he didn't know what to say. He was afraid. And sometimes we don't know what to say. Uh, we, we are afraid or perhaps we're confused, but we don't know what to say. And yet that voice that came from heaven said, listen, listen to him. Now, that voice reminds us of the voice at Jesus' baptism. But in the baptism, the voice was directed to Jesus. You are my son. You are the beloved. Here, the voice is directed to Peter and James and John. This is my son. This is the beloved. You, Peter, James, and John, listen Listen to him. And we as followers, disciples of Jesus, are called to listen, listen to him. We listen as we read God's word. We listen as we open ourselves to the presence of the Holy Spirit guiding us. We listen for Jesus. I was reading an article recently about the uh, spread of Christianity all over the world and beyond uh, some of its uh, original areas. And the article mentioned that 
there was tremendous growth in followers of Jesus in some areas of Mexico that were mostly uh, rural and, and back away from the big urban areas and, and uh, mostly indigenous people. But they had had a tremendous growth in the numbers of people following Jesus. And this article attributed it to the translation of scriptures into their dialect. They had the word of Jesus. They had the scriptures that they could hear for themselves. They didn't have to rely upon a, a priest or a preacher or a missionary. They could hear God's word. They could listen for Jesus. <clears throat> you and I, you and I are called to acknowledge that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is the Beloved, and you and I are called upon to listen, listen to Jesus. This book is not somehow a, a, an object of worship. It is not something to put down on the table in the living room to impress people. It is to be opened and read and studied and prayed over to listen to Jesus. The Transfiguration is in many ways a, a strange story. Uh, visions of Elijah and Moses and voices out of the cloud, but surely it is clear to us who is Jesus and how do we respond in faith? Listen, listen to him. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, We sometimes are as confused and frightened as Peter and James and John. Sometimes our faith is weak. Sometimes we understand all too well, but do not want to hear that we're called to commitment and sacrifice. Lord God, help us to listen to Jesus, listen to his call, and to his command. In Christ's name we pray, amen.
We are so glad that you joined us in worship again today. We believe that we are one part, only one part, but a part of God's church throughout time and throughout the world. So we join with Christians everywhere in praising God and glorifying God and coming together even though only electronically now in worship. As we go from this time of worship, we pray that God's grace will go with you through, for some of us, difficult days, knowing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God undergirds us. The communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us this day and every day. Amen.